the Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters. Hello and welcome back to the Potty Plotters Plotcast. I'm Elaine. And I'm Julia. And, and we together. are... <laughs> <laughs> together we're the Potty Plotters. <laughs> well, even though we get our words all muddled up, it doesn't really matter. You know who we are by now and I can tell you that if you forget, you can contact us on all of our social channels, which are... Uh, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at Potty Plotters. Or you can email us, naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk. Or have a look at our website, pottyplotters.uk. So already, welcome to episode five. If you're still with us and if you've been pressing those buttons, well done. We haven't got any badges, no medals, no nothing. So there you go. But today we are going to talk about getting hot and fruity. (laughs) It's quite cold though, isn't it really? But it is hot and fruity today. It definitely is. And it is freezing still in here. But nevertheless, we are going to tell you all about how to and when to plant your chilies, peppers and aubergine seeds. And then we're going to talk about growing soft fruit. I love soft fruit. Adore it. You love anything. I know, I know. You love any food, don't you, really? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But you can do so much with soft fruit. But before we get there, let's go back to doing chilies, peppers and aubergines. Now, Julia, it's fair to say you are the aubergine queen. I don't know if that's an insult or not, but it's on behalf of me. I'd like to say, (laughs) well done you. You are brilliant at aubergines, are you not? Thank you very much. I will accept that honour and I will talk about aubergines. And aubergines, you can plant now is the perfect time to be planting aubergines. Still in the winter? Yes. In fact, you need to get them going quite early because they do take quite a long time to get going. They do take quite a long time to germinate. This also applies to planting chilies seeds as well because they also take a long time to germinate. So, for example, we set some the other week and we set three different varieties of chilli seeds And even though they were set at exactly the same time, given exactly the same conditions, they've all come up at different times and they've all taken well over two and a half weeks to come up. So think ahead and now is the time to be setting your aubergine seeds. So is it fair to say then that what you're on about is that aubergines, chilies and peppers all have the same method to grow? Yes. So we all set them in exactly the same way in a tray of... uh, compost and I've got a little tray here one of the recycled trays that we have had strawberries or some soft fruit in and they've got holes in the bottom and that's really important for drainage because we don't want our seeds sitting there getting a wet bottom so can you fill that for me Elaine? Thanks very much so I'm leaning over and I'm just yet again putting my big hand in the multi-purpose compost and uh, with two hands full Julia there you go over to you again and two hands full of compost and that should be enough for you, is it not? Nearly up to the top. Nearly up to the top. Why do you grow aubergines, Julia? Because I never do. To show off, obviously. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I can, because I can. And what started with the fact that I've got a polytunnel made it very easy because it was the perfect conditions for growing aubergines. And they are something that's probably a little bit harder to grow. So if you think of aubergines, think of them in the same category as cucumbers they need similar conditions they need a nice moist air whereas the chilies peppers and tomatoes they all like a dry air so they work well together so if you if you are limited keep them with you with your cucumbers and uh, yeah i just love them to show off because what happens when i show you one of them not a lot <laughs> well, i normally get a round of applause oh yeah you do actually <laughs> I thought you were going to say someone else, but there you go, yeah. Yes, indeed you do. <laughs> and people, people look at me like I've grown something special, and it really isn't. It's no harder to grow them. I just think that they look beautiful. What is beautiful about them is the flowers on them. Yeah. They have beautiful yeah. purple flowers. Yeah. So, so I do grow them, because, and I do use a lot of them, because I do like the, the Mediterranean vegetables. So you very kindly filled up this uh, tray here with multipurpose compost, and I'm going to give it a squirt okay. with my my uh, sprayer with some water again minding the microphone very conscious of that Give so it a... are you wetting the whole thing through or is it just the top bit i'm just wetting the top bit okay. so i don't know about half a half a centimeter down i don't want to oversaturate them <laughs> you went buzz I, did, them. I, know, I, did. <laughs> I knew my eyes were meeting one another i don't know what half a centimeter is i must go back to school one day <laughs> 
<laughs> so you've got a nice packet there yeah. of aubergines. I've got aubergines it's called Black Beauty. They Ooh, produce yeah, a nice them. big, big yeah. uh, aubergine. And all I'm going to do is lay the seeds on top of the compost that uh, you've filled up for me that we've given some water and the reason I wet them like this beforehand is so that there's a lot of moisture underneath so that when I'm watering I'm not disturbing the seeds they're going to stay where I put them brilliant so I spaced them about an inch apart so that when they have grown into seedlings they they're not going to be joined together at the roots I'm not going to have to separate them they'll come out quite nicely um from the compost and whereabouts are you going to keep them when you take them home i presume i am going to take them home and i'm not going to leave them up the allotment because these just like the chili seeds just like the pepper seeds they do need a consistent heat to them and they need a heat of around 21 to 24 degrees to actually get them germinated so it's far too cold down the allotment at the moment if you could just yep. sprinkle another I layer on the top for me minding this microphone so I'm if you sprinkling over the top, is that right? Yeah, any seeds that you plant, always think about putting twice the depth of the seed over the top with compost. So imagine, yeah. I, I know you've laughed at me for saying this before, but just think about it as laying a duvet over the top of them to keep them nice and warm. So I've just put two duvets worth over the top of my seeds. If I was to put a lot more and 10 duvets, they'd never get out of bed, would they? I wouldn't with 10 <laughs> duvets over me. So that's all you need to think. I'm going to give them another squirt. Okay. And then we've got another plastic uh, container, but this one hasn't got any holes in. And we've made a mistake before, haven't we? Mm. With putting one with holes on the top. And the only problem is that the moisture actually, it doesn't build up the moisture in there and it lets the air in so it dries the compost out. And we want to retain the moisture. We want it to germinate the seeds. Could you actually put a plastic bag? I don't mean a carrier bag. I yeah. mean a clear plastic bag over the top, like a Ziploc or something. Yeah, and that's an alternative. You could do that it's just not about la letting the air in you, okay. you're trying to build up the moisture to get it to grow so uh, so yeah we'll leave that to one side again they're going to take a couple of weeks to actually get going I will be putting these just these the aubergines into plant pots and everything else will be going in the ground in my greenhouse in the polytunnel but these will stay in pots because they are so prone to spider mite and it's the first thing they go for so as soon as the spider mite appear which they always do I'll be hoofing them out treating them before they can go back in. So we'll do exactly the same now then with these chilies that are in front of me and also the peppers let's get them all going. Yes lovely. Contact the Potty Plotters anytime on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Potty Plotters or email naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk So Julia, what have you really been doing this week? Don't just make it up. What have you really done? Well, I don't know how you can even ask me that because if you'd walk past to, to get a cup of tea, you must have noticed my beautifully clean greenhouse. You can see yourself in the windows that that clean. <laughs> <laughs> and I've also been in the muck heap. And what <laughs> have you been in the muck heap for? I've actually been in the muck heap. It's lovely in there. Elaine, you need to go and have a look in that muck heap. Okay. There's so many worms in there. Oh. And I've been and fetched out some well-rotted horse manure and I've put it in the beds in my greenhouse. So oh, my greenhouse is ready. And I've, I've not dug it through. I've just laid it on the top because the worms are going to come up and take it all down. So that's what I've been doing. What have you been up to? Well, what I've really been doing is the opposite to you because I've been on one of the beds on the overspill allotment and I noticed that I'd put some muck on uh, around about November time actually last year but I think I'd put it on too thick and it was over lots of spring bulbs so I noticed that they'd been trying to poke their heads through so I've actually been picking the poo <laughs> off and bagging it Hello. off and then I put more of that muck that I've picked off <laughs> onto the rhubarb patch. Now, not everybody can say they've been no. picking poo all week, can they? <laughs> the Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters.
we are going to talk about soft fruits. Now, you're really good at strawberries, Julia. So just for a lead in, tell me all about your strawberries and what you're doing with those. Well, the strawberries, again, have been relocated. They've been moved around my plot because the most important thing when you've got your strawberries in is A, they like the sunshine, but B, when the fruit is growing, you need to make sure they've got enough moisture. And... Every year it's been getting hotter and hotter and I have to carry my watering can further further to the strawberries. So I've moved the strawberries to an area where, A, I know the ground is quite moist underneath and that's the advantage of digging your plot, actually. You get to find where the pockets of moisture are and it is also much closer to all the water sources. So, it, for example, in the tangerinery where we are at the moment, I've got seven water butts joined up that have been collecting water off the roof of the tangerinery. It's really important for things, the soft fruits, particularly the strawberries and raspberries, I would say, because both of their roots are quite shallow. So the, the moisture is coming from the top, whereas if you're looking at um, a current, that's got much deeper roots and will find the water by going down. So it's important to think about water sources when you grow in um, soft fruits and also sunshine. And you've also got some fantastic blueberries on your plot, but they need a different type of soil. Yes, yeah. So blueberries are fantastic to grow, but they can take a while to get established and they do need very specific conditions. So they do need ericaceous compost. So they prefer something that's more acidic. So previously I have grown them in containers. I started them in containers. And if I'd wanted to, I could have moved them up to a bigger container. But again, it's about watering, Elaine. It's about watering. We've got no water, um, mains water yeah. down here or anything. It's all collected water. So the best way to go is planting the ground because then the roots will go looking for the, for the water. So I have created a bed, but I've filled it all with ericaceous compost and that's where the blueberry uh, bushes are. But you love to grow uh, black currants, don't I you? I do, yeah, because I love black currant gin, I love black currant cordial, and I love anything to do with black currants. I, I freeze quite a lot. And and then I put them in the pies as well. So black currants for me are the way forward. I love the smell of black currants. It's a bit of a black currant thing, I think. Yeah. But I also make a lot of black currant jelly, black currant jam, and red currants. Um, I make the jellies and the jams. But I think it's really important to talk about things that you like because you're going to use them. Yeah. There's no point growing <clears throat> things if you don't like them. Although I will continue to grow peas because I quite like my husband and he likes peas. That's very kind of oh, you. Yeah. If you were a new plot holder what fruit would you say to grow to start off with i would say get two black currant bushes and you can get them bare rooted at this time of year because it's winter still and what i would do is i'd put two black currant bushes in we know how easy they are actually to start off from um, cuttings but that's another pod later in the year yeah. i would say but i would do that because uh -huh. i just think that they're easy and they smell lovely uh, you see i would differ with you on that one um i think the easy one to start with is strawberries and i'll tell you why because everybody's got strawberry runners yeah that's and, and, and it's so cheap so yeah. people will give you loads of strawberry runners which are basically the babies from the main plant they get going really quickly they've only got a short lifespan so year two and three if anyone's listening year two and three don't pull them out after year one year two and three are the most productive years and then it drops off but you do get a reasonable crop quite quickly don't you whereas with the currants you might have to wait a couple Please. of years and if you're kind of new to it and you want to see results quickly strawberries are the way to go I think and what I would do is make sure that you plan everything so that if you're a new plot holder, make sure you've got plenty of space, get that muck in and sort it out later. You've got plenty of time, but planning is essential. So that just about rounds off this week. So thanks for listening again. And don't forget, if you enjoyed listening to what we've had to say, I know we've been a lot of nonsense today, but if you enjoyed what we've had to say, uh, you can follow us on the social media channels. You can, there's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and we've got a website. Yes, pottyplotters.uk And also we've got emails which are naughtycorner at pottyplotters.uk And if you like what you've heard, press that subscribe button which we've still not found. Or follow us. In the next episode, we're going to explain how you get an elephant in a milk bottle. <laughs>
<laughs> and we'll also get serious for a change. And this time we're going to look at the connection between gardening and good mental health. Having somewhere to go and something physical and repetitive and in fresh air has a really different thing. It's almost like where the body goes, the mind will follow. It's one of the ways I would talk about mental health and how allotments are really helpful for that. Until then, bye from us. The Plotcast Podcast with the Potty Plotters is an Amberland Media production.